Jaguar F Pace SVR. We're going to be starting it in the car here. And we got Patrick over here. He's going to be manning the camera for us today. Thank you, Patrick, for your of help with this. So. Super appreciate it. And now we're going to switch around the camera and get to the drive. Here we go. All right, so we it's very wet today. Uh, we would be starting outside the vehicle, but it's been raining a ton. The Jaguar brought its native UK weather with it. So we're going to do our best here. And these uh, windshield wipers, I think they're a little old. They've you can been. See the uh, black ass is, is it an easy to drive? Throw in your throw in your belt for me, real quick, because this is uh, beeping at me. Um, Tuxedo Black Hat, thank you so much for joining. I'm stoked you're here. And uh, yes, his, his classic question is, every time I'm in a new vehicle, is it easy to drive? Yes, this one is easy to drive, especially if you just leave it in drive, you don't go into sport mode, you don't go into dynamic mode, it's got a comfort mode. If you want it to be even easier to drive, then there's an eco mode. And if you go into eco mode, actually we'll go right here. If you go into eco mode, then it kills the throttle response a little bit. So we're gonna pull this up and we'll click it over to eco mode off to the right side and now that's going to kill throttle response and make it even easier so the throttle tipping it's not too sensitive and you can just kind of casually work your way up to speed and it's super easy and you don't have to worry about that you don't Someone have to worry about asked if, uh, is it better than the s uh vr velour or this uh yeah so that's going to be a comparison made constantly because this vehicle is riding on the same platform as the Velar and it has the same engine, five liter supercharged V8. I'm going to have to turn these on more. Look at all this rain. So unusual for SoCal. Uh, but so same engine, same platform. Is it better? Uh, that really kind of depends on your preference about how the vehicle looks. I think that the F-Pace looks better than the Velar. I do. And this the 21 F-Pace SVR now has the torque converter out of the XE Project 8 Jaguar, and so it's got more torque available in general. It's got 516 pound-feet as opposed to 502 from last year, and that's what the F-Pace SVR is still working with, or that's what the, I'm comparing, confusing myself, uh, the Velar SV Autobiography is still working with, and that torque is available more low down. So I think this one is going to have a slight edge in terms of acceleration over the Velar SV Autobiography Dynamic, and I think it looks better. Mohammed just asked, is it four-wheel drive? All yes, it's permanent all-wheel drive, uh, not a four-wheel drive system. It doesn't have a transfer case or anything like that, but it is permanent all-wheel drive. The torque split is 70% going to the rear in normal mode, in like comfort mode or eco, and then if you go into dynamic, then it can send up to 100% of the torque to the rear wheels. Um, how's the exhaust from last year? Someone asked. Uh, the exhaust hasn't been changed for this year. So hang on, let's go into dynamic. We're gonna take a corner here. It is wet, so I'm gonna do this at a modest pace. And I'll also turn on the, or the exhaust is already in loud mode in dynamic. Feel a little bit of roll here, but it's kind of communicative roll. There's that exhaust. How good does that sound? It sounds incredible. And then you've got manual mode here. We can control that. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. Look at that. Beautiful 355. I'm just honestly doing this for me. I'm not doing it to impress this gentleman. Although I love his car. How are the paddle shifters? The paddle shifters feel great. They're good size, they're thick, and the actuation as you're pulling the paddle feels awesome. And this is a ZF 8-speed automatic gearbox. And uh, it's a torque converter automatic. It's not a dual clutch, but it's a very good transmission. 
So we'll have an opportunity here to do the launch mode, which you can access both in drive and sport. And all you gotta do is be in dynamic, hold your foot hard on the brake, and then really punch it fully on the throttle, and then it'll activate launch mode, and then we'll be able to go. So we'll wait here till the light goes green. Someone asked this or the SVR. So this are the so it's not an so this Ranger is the SVR, the SVA autobiography dynamic, which would I choose? I'd go with this personally. Alright, so here we go. Launch mode. <laughs> oh man, that's what you get with an all-wheel drive system. Zero drama off the line. Just incredible acceleration. Go back into sport. Play with the paddles. <laughs> Every upshift, you get that snarl. It's like the Jaguar cat snarling at you. How do the brakes feel? Brakes feel good. I'm at speed, so I'm not going to slam on it. But the sensitivity is really nice. You get a good sense of the pedal. Um, the initial bite is very pronounced. So you have confidence when you're braking that you're going to be able to slow the vehicle down. And this is not a weak vehicle. It's it's over 4,000 pounds. I can't remember the exact figure. I think it's like 4,400 pounds. It's not light, but the brakes do a great job of slowing it down. And it's a very important component of a heavier weight SUV like this. You gotta have the power, but you need the braking to match. And so this has it. And I just am very impressed with this transmission. I remember the first time I experienced the ZF gearbox from Jaguar was in the F-Type way back in, uh, what was that? It's like 20. 13 when I first time, and I was impressed then, but it's just got better and better and better. Someone asked Dylan, how are the bucket seats? The bucket seats, off. Oh, I don't know, what do you think, Patrick? What do you think about these seats? Are they comfy? Mm, not really. No. I think it's more, more cushioning. Right? Yeah, so it's stiff, right? It's like stiff. the seat, the seat, the leather is soft, but there's not much padding to these. So the, they look beautiful, the leather is soft, but they're kind of firm. And that plus the fact that this ride quality is on the firmer side means that you're not exactly super comfortable in this vehicle at all times. This vehicle doesn't have an air suspension system like for example, the Porsche Macan does as a competitor to this one. So yeah, this seat, the seat comfort and ride quality are probably the weakest points of this vehicle, but the engine note is not a weak point. The acceleration is not a weak point. Zero to 60 takes 4.1 seconds. That's what car and driver says. Honestly, like I think a really good launch, you can probably dip into the high threes. What are the questions we have rolling in? Um, how's the engine noise versus the wind noise? Uh, so, I mean, hang on, I gotta turn off the wipers so we can actually hear the wind noise. And then let me go out of sport mode and we'll just hear what the wind noise sounds like. This is at freeway speeds. There really is not much of it, like at all. It's very quiet in this cabin. And then if you ever wanted to overwhelm what little of the engine noise there is, wind noise there is weather, you just do that. Ryan Lee, how is the uh, build quality of this car? Ryan Lee is asking how the build quality is. Uh, I think perhaps the best answer to that question is a creek test. So we're going to do a creek test here. There, pretty saw up, got a big creek there. In here in these panels, that feels pretty solid. Okay, we've got some creeks in here on this panel here. Okay, a little bit of creeks, but, and creeks up here. That's the biggest creeks I'm hearing. But it's not bad. I think that um, the most pronounced creek I heard was if you hit a bump pretty hard, then uh, it's, um, the whole cabin will creak. And that was kind of a weird one for me. Where if you go over it and it goes creak, the whole cabin, I was like, oh, that's kind of odd. So the creek test is not the best in the F-Pace but I don't think that the build quality is bad. I think that the fit and finish of the materials in here are really solid. The use of high-end high materials is pronounced throughout the cabin. Everything you look at and touch feels high quality. 
So I think the creep test isn't the best answer to the high quality question in the F pace necessarily because it creaks, but it looks and feels solid. George asks, is there ambient lighting? There right. is ambient lighting in the cabin, um, but it's not a multicolor selection. You actually can't even choose the ambient lighting. It's based on the drive mode. So when you're in eco mode, you get a green glow that comes up on the dashboard. If you're in dynamic mode, you get a red glow. If you're in comfort mode, it's a blue glow. Actually, the blue or white. So you only have those three ambient lighting colors. It's not pronounced. There's not different choices, and you can't crank up the brightness or lower the brightness of the ambient lighting. Dylan asks, are there any carbon bits? Carbon bits, I don't believe so. Not in this vehicle. Are the seats comfortable? We just uh, Yeah, we just kind of answered that one. They're, they're on the firmer side and mixed with firmer ride quality. I, we're looking for better seat comfort out of these. Someone asks, is this 200,000 to start? No, the start figure for this one is 85 grand, which is definitely on the higher end of its little micro segment. The Porsche Macan Turbo, Porsche Macan Turbo with the performance pack starts at 87. That's the only one that starts more expensive. The BMW X3M competition is like 77. Uh, the, what else did I think of? The Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio starts at 82. So this is on the higher end of the starting figures, but no, definitely not 200K, I, not, not USD. I'm not sure where you're asking, where you're um, from, but it may be 200K in your currency, but not 200K USD. Brian Lee asks, is the touch sensitive buttons on the steering wheel annoying? Uh, these are not. Um, so first of all, they, they're not all touch sensitive. You have to actually press on them, but they're, um, they're not annoying. No, I think these are fine. The layout here with the control wheel getting into the uh, the digital gauge cluster is a bit clunky and it takes a little while to get used to, but it's you do get used to it. I don't really have a problem with that. Alexander asks, how would you compare this to an uh, Audi SQ7? An Audi SQ7? Uh, well, so the SQ7 is a three-row SUV. This is definitely not in the same segment. SQ7, I uh, cannot remember the starting figure for that one off the top of my head. I have to believe it's like low 70s to start uh, no not even that yeah maybe it's a high 60s low 70s um, so it's gonna be cheaper than this it's not gonna make anywhere near the power this at 550 horsepower absolutely trumps that uh, that makes what does the SQ7 make cannot remember I think it's something like 400 horsepower so a lot more power than this only two rows of seating yeah, it's it's not a not a direct competitor for sure. Someone asked, what are the common issues with the Jaguar F Pace? Uh, common issues. I, I'm pretty sure that the JLR group, the Jaguar Land Rover group, their biggest concerns are really when it comes down to electronics. Um, this one is now using the new Pivi Pro infotainment system, and this is a huge upgrade. I think this is going to hold up very well um, in terms of. The other electrical issues that these vehicles can have, um, I, I don't I don't know the F pace necessarily if it's prone to problems in that regard, but I know the JLR group with some of their other vehicles, that's typically the things you encounter. It's not necessarily engine reliability or uh, I don't know, safety or anything like that. So it's, it's more gonna be electrical issues that could crop up over time, not necessarily right away, but over time. Someone asked, Range Rover SVR or Jaguar SVR, which one do you prefer? Uh, I think I think it's going to be the SVR from Jag over the Range Rover Velar SV Autobiography. I just like the look of this even better, and you've got a bit more torque now for 21 in the Jaguar F-Pace SVR. Someone asked, how's the new PV Pro versus iControl Touch Pro? Uh, yeah, so compared to the Touch Pro Duo, this the Pivi Pro is way better. Uh, higher resolution, faster processing. I think the layout is smarter. It's easier to learn quickly. And uh, like I said, it's just super responsive. So this is a big upgrade for me and very much needed because I think that the Touch Pro Duo system, I think, was holding this vehicle back, especially when you compare it to some of the other rivals. This, this, I would say now, is even better than the system in the Macan. I think it's better than the system in the Stelvia Quad. 
Um, BMW's iDrive system is probably still kind of like leading this one just a little bit, but not not by a lot. This is pretty easy to use. Dylan ass. Turning radius is good too. How about the white in uh, interior? Yeah, so they call this oyster leather and it feels fantastic. How is it gonna hold up to jeans? I don't know, I hope my, I hope my blue jeans aren't staining this right now. If you go for a light color like this, um, just be prepared for doing a lot of detail work in the ears because it just any marks from blue jeans or from uh, anything dark that, that smudges on it is it's just gonna be a pain in the butt to get out. Alexander asks, how do the pedophiles feel and how does the gearbox respond in manual mode? So how do the paddle shifters feel? They, they feel solid, they're aluminum. Um, and uh, and the, gear, the gearbox, the ZF eight-speed torque converter automatic is excellent. It's very responsive. It's not just instantly you pull the paddle and it downshifts. And the upshift is always so fun with that snarl every time. I've been meaning to look for a spot to, uh, to stop to, to do some questions from outside the vehicle. I have yet to, to find one. We'll probably end up... Uh... Actually, I'll go over here. Someone asked us, well, how stable is it in the rain? It felt very stable. Um, you got a wide contact patch in the rear. I think they're 285 section rear tires. Pirelli P0s, good rubber, the suspension, the adaptive dampers do a good job helping mitigate some of the roll. There is a little bit of roll here, and I think that's because this vehicle doesn't have like electronically controlled active anti-roll bars uh, like some of its competitors do. And I think though it sits a little higher up than the Macan. So there's the higher center of gravity means there's a bit more roll in corners, but it felt very stable. I think I'd feel confident kind of getting on it, especially when it's not raining, but even in the rain. CJ asks, how does it compare the SVR compared to the SRQ8? Uh, the RSQ8? Um, so the RSQ8 is going to make more power, 592, I believe, in that one. And it's going to start at more, I think it's, sorry, um, that's over 100 grand for that one. So, and that's also a bigger vehicle. So this is a compact SUV. The RSQ8 is a mid-size SUV. So that one, that one's going to be a larger vehicle. It's going to make more power. It's going to be quicker to 60 and it's going to be more expensive. Someone asks, how is the sound system? Sound system, this Meridian surround sound system is, it's fine. Uh, the quality of the sound is good. The volume does not get nearly as high as something like a Bang & Olufsen system. And the, uh, the bass definitely doesn't hit as hard. Now, I can't show you the, um, I can't do a sound system test for you right now. I will have a test drive and a night drive for this vehicle where I'll do a more extensive sound system test because this one doesn't have, that's one thing that's held back on the Pivi Pro system, no wireless Apple CarPlay. That may be an over the air update at some point, probably will be, but no wireless Apple CarPlay. So I can't, I can't be playing my Stream Beats playlist while recording this video. Better than the Grand Cherokee Trackhawk? Oh. The Trackhawk, over 700 horsepower? I don't know, they're, they're different animals. Um, although, shockingly similar in price now. Now we're talking, this is 85. I think the Trackhawk also starts at 85 grand. Uh, so this has 150, more than 150 horsepower less. And, oh, the sound? This is a more exotic noise than the Trackhawk, but I'll be honest, I think I would be, I'd be remiss if I bought this over the Trackhawk. Just missing out on that extra power. That thing is just such a monster. If you were comparing the two, if you're thinking between the two of them. Is this car reliable or not? Uh, I don't know because it's a 21 model year vehicle. The F-Pace, I don't believe has had any serious issues 
that have come about since its introduction. But uh, but I, I don't I don't think it would give you any major problems. Again, what I reference with JLR and their electrical systems being probably their biggest concern over time. But engine reliability should reliability should be just fine. This five liter supercharged V8 is a solid engine. Okay, we can answer some questions from outside the vehicle. It is just lightly misting now. We can also rev it out for you. So when Patrick hops out, um, I'll just give it a bit of a rev in dynamic mode, which we are in right now. But I mean, you heard it when we were driving. It sounds amazing. So what other questions we have? And, uh, and I also texted Patrick some from that were asked from Instagram and YouTube's community page. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at miles per hour, YouTube's community page. And then TikTok, at miles per hour there. I post their daily videos. So one question from, <clears throat> from Roxy. Is this faster than the Ford Explorer ST? Yes, absolutely. So the Explorer ST makes 400 horsepower. This makes 550, 0 to 60 for this in 4.1 seconds. Explorer ST is, I think, low fives, low to mid fives. And uh, and again, the Explorer ST, like the Audi SQ7, that question was asked earlier, three row SUV, mid size to full size SUV. So this isn't really a direct competitor. I'm gonna close my door. Another question, this is from Lonnie. Uh, does this compare to an uh, Acura MDX Type S? There's another one. That's another mid-size SUV. Uh, this one is a compact SUV. So the Acura MDX Type S makes 355 horsepower, almost 200 less than this one does. Um, 0 to 60 for that one, I don't know off the top of my head. This one is going to be more expensive to start. The Acura, have they announced pricing for the MDX? I don't think they've announced pricing for the MDX Type S yet. So I can't tell you price, but compact versus midsize, 550 horsepower versus 355. Scott asks, does it have self-driving? It does have some self-driving features. All is standard. It's got adaptive cruise control. It's got lane keep assist, not lane centering assist. So it won't just keep you centered in the lane. It'll have to, uh, uh, it'll kind of ping pong you in the lane but it will not let you deviate from your lane. And it has blind spot monitoring, it has rear cross traffic, it's got a surround view camera system. All of that is good standard features on the SVR. Sparsh asks, what's the difference between this and its sister vehicle, the Land Rover Velar SVR? Yeah, so it's the SVA, Autobiography Dynamic. A lot of people confuse, the, confuse those. This SVR, the Land Rover is going to be the SVA Autobiography Dynamic. The, the differences are really going to be aesthetic, how the suspensions are tuned, the SVA Autobiography, Autobiography man, that's annoying to say. I'm just gonna call it the SVA. Um, that one has an air suspension system. This one does not, it rides better than this one. This one is a little more tightly sprung, a little more excitable, and has more low end torque now with the torque converter out of the Project 8. That's going to be your comparison. I think the SVA also starts at a higher price. Not much, but I think it's like 90. Armand asked, does it have dual clutch and how do the shifts feel? Yeah, so we talked a bit a little about the transmission during our drive. It does not have a dual clutch. It has a torque converter automatic from ZF. It's a great transmission. Honestly, as quick shifts as some of the best dual clutches. So he'll ask, how's the suspension? S13, S13? JS13, is this the same Jaguar as the 90s, big, heavy, and et cetera? Yeah, so the suspension is firmer, um, certainly, than something with an air suspension. Uh, it's big. Uh, it's not that big. It's a midsize. It's not that crazy heavy. It's heavier than the Stelvio Quad. It's heavier than the Macan. But the, both those vehicles don't have the same cabin volume and the same cargo space as this one. So those are even, I would, I would argue, those are even sportier than this. Um, in a corner, but this one has more usable space. The, the rear passenger space is better. 
and the trunk volume is certainly better. Dylan just asked, how, how about the interior design? Yeah, so good tie-in here. The interior design is beautiful. I love this like quilted design on the seat backs here. This looks awesome. So the seats we talked about, they're not the, the, the most well padded, but they are beautiful to look at. And you've got that same kind of design into the back seats as well. So you're see. Um, with this kind of center bar that's cut out like as if you're going to have restraints uh, plotted in through here. But the seats are beautiful. This light oyster leather, as we said, is going to be difficult to maintain, but it is gorgeous, especially with this color combo. So unfortunately, it's a rainy day. You can't see the color of this car, but it's an SVO special color on the exterior. But this interior color looks great with it. Seat space. So my mic stand back here but these seats are about about an equivalent um, pullback this one maybe even angled a little bit more so that's my sitting position at six feet tall so you can see a full size little at six feet could fit back here no problem I've got about an inch of knee room headroom my head also clears the roof so we're good there you can adjust the seat can't and not adjust the seat back angle so I can't recline more but I have all the space I need back here you've got air vents you've got Quad zone climate control in this one, which I think was an option equipped to this vehicle. A couple DC sockets. You've got everything you need in the back seats. In the front, someone asked you, how, is, how does the anti roll system work? Uh, it's not an electronic active anti roll bar system, so it's it's mechanical, um, or, or there, there's linkages and there. It's a permanent setup like that. Um, so the active anti roll bars are just going to be permanently set up in one way to mitigate roll of the car. They don't adjust based on drive mode or driving inputs. What's the color of the car? It's not black, right? It's yeah, no, like so a... this, is, this is like a, it's like a copperish purple. It's a really cool color uh, from SVO. So this is from Jaguar Land Rover's Specialty Vehicles Operations Unit. It's a $4,500 paint job. And it's such a bummer that it's a cloudy day because it's, it looks dazzling in the sunlight. It's got a nice metallic flake to it. And really in some light, it looks it does look copperish. And then in others, you see more of that plum color. It's a beautiful color. Dylan asks you, about, what about the wheel design? Yeah, so the wheels, these are 22 inch wheels. I think they're fantastic. They look like they're in motion when the car is just sitting here. Ah, oh, they're really cool wheels. I love them. It's got this duo tone, like darker gray with a lighter gray here finish. As I said, you got Pirelli P0 tires, two 65s on the front, two 85s, I think, in the rear. Yeah. Two 95s in the rear, even wider. Uh, the seats are kind of comfortable. Uh, I mean, like, if you're just sitting sitting still in them, yeah, they're comfy, but when you start moving and you just start dropping around in them, you're wishing for more padding. Like, that's, that's what you want. They hold you nicely into place. The bolstering is solid here but you just want a little more padding. That's my only complaint with the seats. Do you know if there's a, an, an option for a red interior for this car? I don't off the top of my head know if red interior is an option. I wouldn't be surprised because Jaguar does it in some of their other vehicles. I know it's in the F-Type. Uh, I know it's in the F-Type. So they may, they may bring it over to the F-Pace. It may be an option. Someone asked, do you still bump your head when you get inside the door or is it like the old F-Pace? Ah, so in, in the fronts or the rear? So, because getting in the fronts, I'll just hop in here again. As long as you kind of lean forward and then go in, yeah, you do kind of hit your head. Huh. Yeah, my head does bump. I guess when I'm sitting in, this, when I plop down into the seat, if my head's all the way up, my head kind of bumps a little bit. In the back seats? Maybe I, maybe I mentally just adjusted for that. Was my head going to hit? My head yeah, might have, head. my head is, yeah, my head was probably going to bop on it a little bit. So you just have to mentally adjust for it and you just kind of duck your head when you're getting in and out. Do you know how many uh, airbags you have? I don't off the top of my head, no. I don't know the airbags. I don't know the safety rating. Um, there's no carbon fiber parts, right? No, no, no carbon right? fiber in this vehicle. Anything. No. Sorry. See how, look at the size of this trunk. 
This is significant cargo space for a compact SUV. So you think about the vehicles that competes against the Macan, the Stelvio Quad, the X3M competition, that is the closest cargo space at 20 something. This has over 30 cubic feet of space in the trunk, which is nuts. A lot of space. What is the top speed? Top speed is 178 miles per hour. 178 in an SUV, in a, in a small SUV. Pretty wild. Uh, what would you say is the worst flaw of the car? Uh, I, you know, I think it's got to be that ride quality. I want, I want softer ride quality when I'm spending closer to 100 grand. This one, as tested, is 97. I want a little softer ride quality. I know that you know the the ride firmness it could could, could be could be communicated or received as um, excitement or driving engagement, but I think it should in comfort mode have softer ride than it does. In dynamic mode, I'm fine with the ride quality. That's that's like you're in it, you're you're expecting that. But in comfort mode, I like a little bit softer ride quality. I love the way it looks. The changes for 21, you got these like blades in here, sorry, the blades that come up into the um, lower air dam. You got these heat extractors on the hood that looks awesome. Got some aerodynamic ripples behind these front wheels. This is all functional. This is a functional vent in here, channeling air along the side of the car. And then you've got more aerodynamic ripples behind the front, uh, behind the rear tires. Can you lower or raise the ride height? You cannot. No air suspension. You cannot adjust the ride height. Someone asked, uh, open the hood. Hood, yes, okay. You can do that. I think in previous live few days, people have wanted me to rev it with the hood open, so I'll do that too. We'll see if we can hear any of that supercharger whine. So I don't know, uh, the engine cover may have been removed by the fleet management company, I'm not sure. Because I do think that it typically comes with uh, an engine cover. I like that it's not here. I love that. So I'll just go run through the specs again real quick. 550 horsepower, 516 pound-feet of torque. That's 14 more pound-feet than last year. Zero to 60, 4.1 seconds. Top speed 170 miles per hour, and if you care, it gets 18 combined MPG. I'm gonna rev it now with the hood open. Still in dynamic. Think that Jaguar is the same Jaguar 10 years ago? Uh, do I think they're the same as 10 years ago? No, I don't. I think that Tata's ownership has enabled them to do a lot of great products that they would have otherwise been handicapped if they were still owned by Ford um, or, or you know, even still were independent but just didn't have the budget to do some of the stuff that they're able to do now. Let's just show them the front from the front the hazards. That's where the hazards are showing up. It's also where you're going to see the turn signals. They would look like that on the left or right hand side. So no, I don't think they're the same as 10 years ago. Um, I definitely think they're better. This is is going to be the probably the swan song of engines like this. Almost certainly because Jaguar Land Rover is moving towards full electrification. Um, so I mean, we'll miss out on products like this. After driving the I Pace, I'm encouraged by what they can do with all electric powertrains because. That was a lot of fun to drive that car. But no, they're not the same. They're better in, in large measure. Someone asked, do you think they have different options for headlights? Apparently no. Apparently we've seen different headlights on, our, on that model. Uh, maybe you saw the older model's headlights. The headlights have been updated for 21. So this design is new for 21. You probably saw the 2020's headlights, which are different. How much horsepower does it have again? 550. 550. Turn 
still going or off? No, they're off. Oh. Um, hang on, let me peek at it real quick. Yeah, they're still going. Uh, do I think the FPS is better than other cars in this segment? Depends. Um, the it really kind of depends if you like the look of this vehicle versus liking the look of the, the competitors I've already mentioned: the Macan uh, Turbo, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio, the BMW X3 M Competition. I think it probably looks the best in the segment. I do. I think it's one of the it's one of the most effortless designs in the segment. The other cars are kind of forced in their bulginess. This one, it just kind of like naturally flows from the design of the vehicle. Um, is the performance the best? I think that the Stelvio Quadrifoglio is top of segment in terms of driving excitement. The X3M Competition also is a great one to drive. The Macan Turbo, great one to drive. All of those vehicles, smaller platforms, uh, better uh, input from the steering, and they're lighter weight. So I think all those vehicles are a slight bit more entertaining to drive. The exhaust noise and the power from this engine, 550 horsepower, is the most in its segment. I think that there's a lot to love about this vehicle. You do have to pay a few extra thousand dollars for it compared to the Stelvio Quad or the Xterium Competition. But I think it's beautiful. I think it's very good looking. The turn signals from the back. Turn signals from the back. All right. Yeah, the tail lights have also been updated for 21. Slimmer form with this kind of wave pattern to them. The diffuser is the same. Again, apart from these aerodynamic coils back here, the diffuser is the same. They got these quad exhausts that jut out. They look awesome. They're menacing. This up here, also a change to 21, you now have this like little lip of an additional, it's just an extension on the roof spoiler. It does, does kind of look like an afterthought. Does the SVR have massage seats? No. Does it have the what seats? The massage seats? No, it does no. not have massaging seats. No, I don't even think that's an option. Someone said I'd rather have a Toyota like this. <laughs> Me too, that's why I own one. No, it's just because why that's what I can afford. Do you know any specs and stuff from the UK version versus the USA? Uh, do I know the like the PS uh, and and Newton meters of torque? I don't. I don't know the I don't know the translation, I'm sorry. Google will have that, that answer for you. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have that that data. Cool guys, if you have other questions, be sure to ask them. Um, I'll just rattle off as I'm still going through it. Other changes for 21, they redesigned the dashboard layout. You got that Pivi Pro system on 11.4 inch screen. The center console area is slightly updated. You got a new shifter there that says SVR on it in leather. It's a beautiful looking cabin, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, I think it's it's stunning inside. Again, okay, the design of this vehicle like kind of really just trumps its rival. Aesthetically, it gets gorgeous inside and out. Yeah, yeah I think that the diffusers are classic. For sure, the happy plastic. These down here, yeah. these pieces. Plastic yeah, this is sure. plastic. It's not metal. Looks like metal, but metal would add weight. They got to save the weight where they can. Overall design, I love the color actually. The yeah, color the, color, is beautiful. the color is gorgeous. I, again, it's so hard to really appreciate it when it's overcast yeah. and misting. If it was sunny for sure, I think it would pop out more. Yeah, I just think it's it's so appropriate that it's misting on the day we're driving a British vehicle. It just wanted to feel like home. But I, yeah, I, the, the color is absolutely stunning. I think I'll have, yeah, so in the, it's been kind of overcast this whole week. But I think in the POV test drive, we get some sun on it, and you can see the color in that one. So when as Jaguar F Base SBR Range Rover Sport, not the Velar. Yeah, not the Velar, and not the yeah, yeah. The Sport versus this. The Sport's gonna be a bigger vehicle. There's another one you can get it with three rows. Um, 
Uh, that one would probably be a starting figure similar to this. Just kind of if you're talking base sport, if not talking the V8 version of that one. Oh, that's tough. The sport looks really good. You get the off-road capability of the Range Rover. Styling of that is good. You got a bit more interior space, but then you don't have this engine. I think this car, so much of this car is the way it looks, and it's the engine. And this engine is it's just, it's a beautiful thing. And, and we're not gonna have anything like this 10, 15 years from now. This engine is going to be a relic, and we're gonna have appreciated it for what it was. We're gonna be moving on to electrification. So um, I think while you can still get them, a supercharged V8 and a 21 model year vehicle is something to appreciate. So I'd probably just go with this. I wanna check out the roof inside, the panel. Oh yeah. So yeah, it does have a panoramic roof. And it's it's appropriately sized for the size of the vehicle. Like it's not small, certainly. Uh, it does look like, so I'll open the roof. Well, it's missing. I'll open the roof briefly. Just to show you that the sunroof opening is not all the way back there. Like you might think, because it looks like it would go all the way back. It kind of stops like right here. Oh, look at that. Yep. Exactly. Perfect. That was amazing. And it won't go back any further. So that's how big the sunroof opens, but you do have the beautiful glass ceiling as a compliment. Would you prefer this or the GLC Mercedes? Oh, yeah. So that's another one I didn't mention. Good call on that one. So the GLC 63, that starts, I think it's the least expensive to start. 74 grand for that one to start. Um, doesn't make as much power. Zero to 60 is 3.7 for that one, so it's quicker to 60, tied with a Macan Turbo performance pack. I think this looks better. I do, I think yeah. it looks better. I think the interior also has a little more, so the GLC Mercedes-Benz make beautiful interiors. This feels more special, I would argue. The cabin of this one feels a little more special. I would kind of say more mature. Like, yeah, right. Like, like, like the the Mercedes is a little flashier, yeah, right? This but this is, is more, this is like, no, I don't need that. Like, yeah. I've, I've kind of like, I've grown up, man. Not that that one's immature. This is just a little more mature. Yeah, um, I agree. Like asked, refined. Exactly, refined is the correct word. Yeah. How smooth is it? Uh, so I, smooth. It, yeah, I mean, it's pretty smooth. If you're on smooth roads, it's yeah. smooth. And the, the the engine is incredibly smooth. If you're not completely diving into the throttle. It's, it's very smooth, the power is linear, the transmission is just fluid in all of its gear changes. It's a very smooth car. Again, I'll come back to the ride quality, could be improved a bit more to lean a little lighter on the uh, on the aggression and a little heavier on the comfort. Is there a lag for the torque to kick in? No, and that's, no, that's kind of what you get with a supercharger. You don't have the, the typical buildup that you have from forced induction from a turbo. It's it's kind of just always there. Uh, this or the BMW X5 or F6? Okay, so the X5 is the larger vehicle. That's another one you can get with three rows. Um, it's gonna be more expensive. If you're if we're looking at X5, I mean I don't even want to think about the M because that's that's a lot more money. But if you're thinking about the X5 M M50i, I think would be something you could compare. If you needed that extra space, there's nothing wrong with the X5 M50i. It's actually a ton of fun, that car. 423 ah, horsepower, off the top of my head. And 0-60 to 60 is going to be a little slower than that one. I think this looks better than that. I don't know. I love the X5. I really do. I could get on board with that one. But if you, if you don't need the extra space, this has the look. This has the supercharged V8. Again, that engine counts for so much when you're thinking about this amount of money. Okay, no other questions yeah. coming in, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. I want to thank my Patreon members and my YouTube members. You guys mean so much to me. You really support the channel. I want to thank Patrick for his help today filming this video. And uh, guys, if you want to follow me on TikTok or Instagram, it's at miles per hour. I'm doing daily little posts of little things on Instagram and the stories. You can get teasers on the vehicles I'm reviewing. Um, but guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been the Jaguar F-Pace SVR 21 model year.
I'll throw the specs out one more time. 550 horsepower from a supercharged V8, 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds. Top speed is 178 miles per hour. Starting price of 85 grand. This one as tested is 97. Look for the POV test drive and night drive to come out soon on this one, along with a drive impression. Actually, someone wants to see some drive by. Maybe drive by. All right, all right. So Patrick will hang out here. That. I'll just do a quick drive by. Yeah. Sucks as the weather. It's cloudy today. It's a little wet, but. <laughs> Damn, that exhaust is beautiful. Wow. Beautiful exhaust. So weird of a house. It's cloudy today. It's in California. It sucks. But we're making it work. It's a beautiful SUV, honestly. I'm going to give you guys as much exhaust theater as possible. It sounds pretty good, right? Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's the Jaguar F-Pace SVR. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the B&B drives to come, and uh, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys later.